Robinson, Randall, I want to come to you because Dr. West, again, I, I love these panelists are so brilliant. They always set me up for where I want to go next anyway. And sometimes redirect me with their brilliant closes. But when Doc talks about, and, and this, is, this has been echoed earlier today, but when Doc talks now, Randall, about not being so narrow and not just talking about the USA, it, it, it takes me beautifully, obviously, to you. You founded uh, Trans Africa. You've since retired from, from doing that, that work specifically at Trans Africa. Um, but I'm, I'm just curious to get inside of your head, given all that you have done for all these years, and we, we know you. We know you as the one who literally went on a hunger mm. strike. You put your body and your life right. on the line. <laughs> You've done it more than once. If Nelson Mandela walked in here right now, the first person he'd walk to is Randall Robinson. That's right. Uh, Randall Robinson uh, is so important mm -hmm. um, to breaking the back, from our side at least, the back of apartheid in South Africa. I wonder, Randall, I, I, obviously I didn't get a chance to talk to you then, but, but on election night, given all that you have done on the world stage in Haiti, South Africa, and all around the diaspora, um, what were your thoughts about how he would be received uh, what are your thoughts now about what it says about the nation? What are your thoughts now about the challenge to us as black people, given that we have an African-American, the president, who should be an ally on the issues that you've been raising for so many years? That's a lot That's a lot thrown at you, but just I'm just trying to get inside your head. What are you thinking? Well, I'll, I'll say what I, I think it may say and uh, a bit about what it does not say. Okay. Um, it may say that the country, when it voted to elect Barack Obama, had uh, self-interest in mind. He's brilliant. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't become president of the Harvard Law Review Thank you. unless you are brilliant. You have to make straight A pluses <laughs> against the toughest competition in the world to make Harvard Law Review and then to become its president. Lonnie can tell you more about that, but that's an extraordinary achievement. He's brilliant, and he, he, he also is a way out from the country, and he also had, I think, um, the assistance of his predecessor. Uh, <laughs> so, but, this is not an address to the problems that I think we're here to talk about. I, I think we need to contextualize a lot of what we've been saying here. Uh, because we've talked about how we should dance with him. I think it may be more important to understand that question, to talk about how we've been dancing and how we have not been dancing. Mm -hmm. Louis Brandeis, uh, Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis once said that the most important office in a democracy is the office of citizen. In a democracy, the citizenry must be enlightened. We don't have a great deal of experience in America, black and white, with informed, critical oversight. Mm -hmm. We, as a population, measured against most areas of the world in a way that would shock Americans, are globally illiterate. We don't know very much, and it's not our fault because you can't know what you can't know. Mm. And so it would surprise many Americans who have this uh, self-image about ourselves to learn that we have become the major obstruction to the human rights movement in the world. Mm. You look at the treaties that have been embraced by the United Nations community. The treaty to defend the rights of women has been ratified and accepted by 185 countries. The U.S. is against it mm. in a very tiny group. The treaty to defend the rights of children, ratified by an enormous number of nations, the overwhelming majority, the U.S. is against it. The establishment of the International Criminal Court to bring to justice people who have 
committed horrific human rights abuses, overwhelmingly adopted, adopted at Rome, with Africa, Asia, Europe, everybody on board, all of America's allies. The Clinton administration weakened it, and the Bush administration would not ratify it because there was a fear that before the bar of this court would be brought at one time or another Americans who had committed horrific human rights crimes. And so we want the world to live by one yardstick mm. while we live by another. And uh, the, the, the disadvantage of watching American news is that you get controlled news. And when you watch news in other countries, you get an entirely different view onto what we are and are not doing. It took us 40 years to accept the genocide, the Convention Against Genocide. The Clinton administration, President Clinton himself and Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, blocked UN intervention in Rwanda. It cost tens of thousands of lives. But we loved Clinton. So when we're talking about critical oversight, we have to look uh, at what we have to practice now, and we must mm. practice it constructively. But we have to look at what we didn't practice then. Mm -hmm. President Clinton went to the WTO and stripped the Caribbean countries of their export markets in Europe, meaning countries like St. Lucia, with 85% of their exports uh, earnings coming from the sale of bananas, had their economies crushed. Farmers in St. Vincent were committing suicide because of the policies of the Clinton administration. The Bush administration, President Bush, with the assistance of Condoleezza Rice and Colin Powell, went into Haiti, sent 30 U.S. Special Forces in to kidnap the president of Haiti <coughs> and his wife, who is an American citizen, a product of the University of Pennsylvania Law School, born in the Bronx, the administration probably in this case committed a felony, took them to the Central African Republic that was then a, a, a police state, a dictatorship, I thought to die. Maxine Waters and I had to charter a plane to go and rescue the president and take him to Jamaica, and he is now in uh, South Africa. But here's the point. You can't know what you haven't had a chance to know. We owe Haiti. Yes. We would not be here today had Toussaint Louverture done what no one had done before or done since. They defeated Napoleon Bonaparte. They lost 150,000 lives to purchase their freedom, and they ignited the emancipation movement in all of North and South America. Lincoln didn't do this. It was begun and triggered by Toussaint Louverture. And Haiti has been punished for it since 1804. But you see, we, we don't know. And we allowed President Clinton to buy our favor with a saxophone and a knowledge of gospel songs. You cannot practice critical vigilance without information, without knowing. Otherwise, we're simply cheerleaders who respond to fashionable speeches. We have to know who is for us wow. and who has been against us. Our behavior in the United Nations on these human rights treaties is a disgrace. And it would shock most Americans to look at the record. 
out of 20 plus main 